सो हेलो टू ऑल माई डियर एस्पीरेंस वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेल टू एम डी एस टेंटल अकेडमी सो एस्पीरेंट नाउ एग्जाम इज कमिंग नियर सो प्लीज डोंट गेट पैनिक कीप ऑल स्टडिंग एंड फोकस ऑन योर गोल सो दिस इज अ पार्ट एट ऑफ पास पेपर डिस्कशन विद इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट इफ एनी बडी हैव नॉट वॉच द रिमेनिंग पार्ट सेवन दे कैन वॉच बाय क्लिकिंग ऑन आई बटन अबाउ एज वेल एज द लिंक इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द टूडेज लेक्चर सो विच सीमेंट इज लेस सॉल्यूबल इन दर कैविटी सो दैट इज योर सिलिकेट फॉस्फेट रिमेंबर जिंक फॉस्फेट इज द मोस्ट सॉल्यूबल सो वॉज द बेस्ट मैथड ऑफ क्लीनिंग एंड टॉयलेट योर कैविटी सो अमॉन्ग द अवेलेबल ऑप्शन द बेस्ट इज सिट्रिक एसिड बट इफ सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइट इज देर इन ऑप्शन यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट दैट ओनली सो हाउ इट इज डन बाई यूजिंग राउंड बर एंड ऑन टिक स्पून एक्सकेवेटर्स एंड इरीगेशन विद सोडियम हाइपोक्लोराइड टू क्लीन द चैम्बर इन द बैड द चैम्बर इज वाइफ विद कॉटन एंड एड इज यूज फ्रॉम थ्री वे सीरेंज टू ड्राई द चैम्बर नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ऑर्डर सो लीज सॉलिबल सिलिकोफॉस्फेट फॉलोड बाई सिलिकेट्स एंड सिंक फॉस्फेट now a children is there bond with cleft palate microdontia and glossoptosis so what it is it's a pierre robin syndrome so the left finding in the page this is shows what it shows normal calcium normal phosphate and elevated alkaline phosphates now let's understand this aspirant calcium and phosphate so the breakdown and build up of the bone is essential in regulating the level of calcium and phosphorus in the blood so in most people with page disease this levels remain normal but because of increased osteoblastic activity and bone formation the bone specific alkaline phosphatase that is bsap levels are elevated and measuring total alkaline phosphatase level may be useful in patient with a normal liver function however this BSAP level is more specific than alkaline phosphatase for Paget disease. Then, as per if you inspect the lateral border of the tongue at the base, which structure would you expect to find? That is your foliate type of papillae. The patient is there suffer a blow to his maxillary central incisor without resulting in fracture. So, what happened to the pulp? The pulp become non-vital irrespective of the treatment. so now is when the important thing you have to consider here is this question is little incomplete they have to mention the age of the patient because if apex is open the chances of regenerating the pulp vitality is there but if it is a close apex it can become non vital even you go or not go for the treatment why because sometime the communication of the inside of the pulp to the blood vessel will be disrupted Now, a patient is there on anticoagulant therapy. Require an extraction to be performed. So, which of the following is not true? The option D, that is, heparin, should be administered subcutaneously. Other three are right. Aspirin. Remember, you can control post-operative bleeding with the help of transdermic acid. Prothrombin value of at least two point five is required for extraction, and it takes at least eight hours for heparin to take their effect. Now, if a patient is there, a middle-aged woman, give a history of intermittent unilateral pain in the submandibular region. So, most probable cause is calculus in the salivary duct, resulting in sialolithiasis. Now, which of the following liquid is not suitable for prolonged immersion of cobalt chrome partial denture? So, that is your hypochlorite solution. So, the first forming microbial element of plaque are what? They are your anaerobic gram positive. Now, this is very good question. Your cast crown fits on die, but not on tooth, and discrepancy is about 0.3 mm. So what you are going to do? You have to take new impression and make new crown. Now, which of the following procedure will not achieve sterilization? So that is boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius for two hours. Now, long bone grow by what? It grow by interstitial growth in cartilage epiphysis. Now, as per the bone graft method, that has shown the greatest osteogenic potential. That is your cancellous bone graft. Remember, as per the these two, three terms, osteoconduction. So, it's a process by which an implanted scaffold passively allow ingrowth of the host vasculature, cells, and tissue. Example are the resorption of calcium sulfate or phosphate cement. Then, osteoinduction is a process by which exogenous growth factor. Promote differentiation of host mesenchymal cells to form chondroblast and osteoblast that form new bone. The best example are your BMP, that is bone 
morphogenetic proteins and osteogenesis is synthesis of a newborn by donor cells derived from either the host or a graft donor example are your autographs and stem cell transplant now a case is there where a child is having less than normal number of teeth mandibular later incisor is large than usual on x-ray it shows two roots and two canals so your diagnosis is what it's a fusion okay if it is one root and you can see this bifid crown it is gemination now the most stable area to evaluate the craniofacial growth that is your anterior cranial base Imagine the following system is not designed to discourage crack propagation by the presence of crystalline second phases, that is your felspathic porcelains. What is the final porosidin set plaster? Aspirin, it is about 20%. Now the setting reaction of plaster is accelerated by all the following except low relative humidity. But if you increase temperature or rapid speculation is there or slurry water, it can increase the setting reaction of plaster so dear aspirant that was all for today any help you can contact me my information is there my number is there my mail is there and even from your website you can contact us till then aspirant take care keep on working and please focus on your goal